News Literacy Project by Layla Sahir, Sabrina Vandahar, and Elise Westoff. What is news? News is the coverage of an event, relevant, can be a tragedy, death, or crime, can be the coverage of an influential person, and affects and impacts the public, is what people care about, it includes unusual happenings, and it includes the trends. What is journalism? Journalism is fact-finding, accuracy, informs people, uses sources such as documents, people, or the internet, verifies sources, should be unbiased, is storytelling without fabrication, and uses context or background, ignites change, and educates people. Information neighborhoods. News. There's straight news or hard news, opinion, entertainment, and advertising, publicity, raw information, and propaganda. Um, vocabulary. News literacy. Critical thinking skills to be able to consume or create credible information across all media and platforms as students, consumers, and citizens. Vetting or fact-checking is verifying information. A byline is a reporter's name in a news article. A news beat is the area of coverage. A nutshell paragraph tells you why you care about a certain article. Context is the background to go with raw information. An ombudsman answers complaints coming to news paper about accuracy, aka public editor. Human sources can be eyewitnesses, experts, officials, or anonymous sources. And a watchdog fact-checks fact media and holds them accountable for the information they present to the public. How to be a media watchdog. You always check your information. C. You confirm your information neighborhood. Is it news, opinion, raw information, or propaganda? Who created it and for what purpose? H. Have high standards for credibility. Look for numerous high quality sources, more than one point of view, documented facts, and a neutral tone. E. Ensure that the information has been verified. Can you tell who produced it? Is it from a reliable source? Is there a way to check it? C. Consider responsible next steps. Given the nature and credibility of the information, should you share it with others? Discard it? Act on it? K. Know what you can believe by asking critical questions. Does this feel fair? Is it balanced? Are sources cited? Is the subject given a chance to be heard? Are you given enough information to make up your own mind? Video watchdogging. Is seeing believing. How fast is information spread? How is information spread? There are problems with breaking stories, pressures for journalists with breaking stories, and false coverage. Audience bias is what you want to read or see, what confirms your bias. You read or see everything through your lens. Does music affect your interpretation of a piece of information? Sites to use for fact-checking. Factcheck.org, the Washington Post Fact Checker, PolitiFact.com, Center for Responsive Politics, New York Times Interactive Politics Site, National Institute on Money and State Politics, Every Political Leader on Every Issue, RumorCheck.org, Snopes.com, StinkyJournalism.org, Yahoo News, The Signal, The Sunlight Foundation, Regret the Air, and Pointer. Summary of what you've learned. Don't come, don't jump to conclusions. Look for bias and misinformation. Look for missing context or loaded language. An easy way to find links to newspaper articles, TV shows, and much more about politics is Twitter. If you do not follow any major news sources, like shown, you are able to go to the search bar and type in what you'd like. Politics is an easy way to find anything related to politics. Here, you can go to the people 
and it will show you all the major sources that include politics in it. For example, Fox News, CNN, NBC, NPR. Another way you could also do is use pound politics, and this will bring up anything that someone has used the word pound politics in. And hashtag is something that people use to create a subject or a summary of what the tweet is about. If you would like to find the actual major news source you are looking for, you use the at sign and then type in what news source you'd like. For example, New York Times. Another easy way to find news on politics is go to iTunes. You go up to the iTunes podcast symbol and click onto it. Then you bring down the arrow and go down to news and politics. You can spend time looking around here or you could go down to the top podcasts and you will find plenty of usable resources. Another way is you can go to politics podcasts and it will bring up a bunch of other types of podcasts that you can listen to. A very popular podcast is NPR. It's all politics podcast. Here you can see all of the episodes they've ever done and you can get them all free. Normally podcasts are free but some you will have to pay for. Coverage for people that have pre-existing conditions. This is what Mitt Romney said about his own plan. But number one, pre-existing conditions are covered under my plan. Mostly fiction. Uh, Mitt Romney does have a health care plan, not the one from Massachusetts, but he's got one he's currently proposing. And it does say that people who currently have health insurance or who have had it for three years cannot be, or, I'm sorry, for the, over the last three months, cannot be denied coverage. But Mitt Romney's plan offers no such guarantee for anybody who has not had health insurance for the past three months. So that claim is simply uh, not true. As you saw, ABC News was able to tell you whether every, most of what the president said was fact or fiction, or what most of the Governor Romney said was fact or fiction. The idea, which was originally presented by Congressman Ryan, you're running me, uh, is that we would give a voucher to seniors, and they could go out in the private marketplace and buy their own health insurance. The problem is that because the voucher wouldn't necessarily keep up with health care inflation, it was estimated that this would cost the average senior about $6,000 a year. Now, in fairness, uh, what Governor Romney has now said is he'll maintain traditional Medicare alongside it. But there's still a problem, because what happens is those insurance companies are pretty clever at figuring out who are the younger uh, and healthier seniors. They recruit them, leaving the older, sicker seniors in Medicare. And every healthcare economist who looks at it says, over time, what will happen is the traditional Medicare system will collapse. We, did, we didn't also uh, uh, do something that I think a number of people across this country recognize, which is put, it, put people in a position where they're going to lose the insurance they had and they wanted. Right now, the CBO says up to 20 million people will lose their insurance as Obamacare goes into effect next year. And likewise, a study by McKinsey and Company of American Businesses said 30% of them are anticipating dropping people from coverage. So for those reasons, for the tax, for Medicare, for this board, and for people losing their insurance, this is why the American people don't want Medicare, don't want Obamacare. It's why Republicans said, do not do this. And the Republicans had a, had a plan. They put a plan out. They put in a plan, a bipartisan plan. It was swept aside. When Obamacare is fully implemented, we're going to be in a position uh, to show that costs are going down. And over the last two years, health care premiums have gone up. It's true, but they've gone up slower than any time in the last 50 years. So we're already beginning to see progress. In the meantime, uh, folks out there with insurance, you're already getting a rebate. It's, it's, it's a, a lengthy descri description, but number one, pre-existing conditions are covered under my plan. Number two, young people are able to stay on their family plan. Uh, that's already offered in the private marketplace. You don't have to have the government uh, mandate that for that to occur. But let's come back to something the president and I agree on, which is the, the key task we have in health care is to get the cost down so it's more affordable for families. And, uh, and then he has as a model for doing that 
a, a board of people at the government, an unelected board, appointed board, who are going to decide what kind of treatment you ought to have. As you saw, there was another snippet from ABC News who did a fact or fiction on a different presidential debate. Just to make sure that everything that on ABC News fact or fiction was correct, I went on to factcheck.org and typed in the presidential election debate. And this is what I came up. According to these notes, ABC News was correct on what they said. Another thing I checked up on was the vice presidential debate. I went onto YouTube and typed in vice presidential debate, and here came up a fact check video. I did not know if this was credible or anything, so later on I will show you that I went on to factcheck.org and everything here is correct. Take $716 billion from Medicare to spend on Obamacare. Even their own chief actuary at Medicare backs this up. And then they put this new Obamacare board in charge of cutting Medicare each and every year in ways that will lead to denied care for current seniors. This board, by the way, it's 15 people. The president's supposed to appoint them next year. And not one of them even has to have medical training. From the video you just saw, here's the factcheck.org page. I looked up vice presidential debate, and this is the fact check. As you see, most of what is on the video is on here. Elise here. I took care of fact-checking blogs and seeing how well they covered our issue. I chose one statewide and one nationwide blog to follow, one being pro-Obamacare and one against it. My first example is from a statewide blog against Obamacare, for which I chose the Iowa Republican. The article, titled Romney Scores with Early Morning Des Moines Rally, talks about a rally the candidate held in Iowa's capital in early August. The first part I'd like to highlight is a quote taken from Romney. I fact-checked it and determined that it indeed was said. However, the credit of this article goes down when the author includes a false fact about how much Obamacare would cost. It further drops when a word is misspelled. The second article I have is from a nationwide blog, The Daily Beast. In a subcategory called Election Beast, I found my pro-Obamacare example. The article I chose is called Metascare. Now Ryan Budget has Republicans fear-mongering too. In the article, the author accurately quoted Ryan's Priebus, the RNC chairman, in an interview he had with David Gregory on MSNBC's Meet the Press. The author also correctly quoted Mitt Romney during a speech he gave in Greer, South Carolina, where he used a whiteboard to demonstrate his ideas claiming he would leave Medicare alone while Obama would cut $716 billion from it. However, later the author claims that Paul Ryan's plan would leave the same cuts, which are actually future savings, for Medicare, when in reality, it would generate more savings. The result is that both sides and sizes of blogs had positives and negatives. It's important to remember to always fact check, no matter how official or trustworthy you think the media outlet's information is. This is the article from the New York Times and the U.S. Po politics section. It's called, Medicare Rises is Prime Election Issue. As we scroll down to the, um, the statement that we're going to fact check, it says... The president's idea, for instance, for Medicare was to cut it by $700 billion, Mr. Romney said at a rally in St. Augustine. That's not the right answer. We want to make sure we preserve and protect Medicare. This is the YouTube video I found to check that Romney actually said what the New York Times claimed he did. Common ground to bring people together. He's come up with ideas that are very different than the president's. The president's idea, for instance, for Medicare was to cut it by $700 billion. That's not the right answer. We want to make sure that we preserve and protect Medicare. As you can see, he did actually say that. So the next step is to fact check Romney to see if his facts are accurate. This bullet point is from an article I found on factcheck.org about the issue that the New York Times quote talks about, and it says, 
A Romney campaign ad wrongly claims that money you paid for Medicare is being used to pay for Obama's health care law, but the law doesn't take money out of the existing health hospital insurance trust fund. It cuts the future growth of spending, and in the future, seniors will still receive more in benefits than they paid in. So this is just kind of a snapshot of the article, but the whole article talked about the $700 billion that Romney set, claims that Obama is taking out of Medicare, but really he's cutting it out of future spending. So Romney's facts are not accurate in this case. This article is from the Chicago Tribune in the news section. It's titled, Ryan Health Tax Credit Idea Fills in Blank for Romney. There are three statements in this article that I checked, and I also fact-checked the last one. The first statement says, What I would do is level the playing field and say individuals can buy insurance on the same tax-advantaged basis that businesses can buy insurance, Romney said at a campaign event in Orlando in June. The second statement is, more broadly, Romney told Fortune magazine in an interview this week he wants to preserve tax preferences for middle-income taxpayers, such as home ownership, charitable giving, and health care. The last statement is about Paul Ryan, and it says, Ryan's plan would give a tax credit of $2,300 for individuals and $5,700 for families to pay for health care coverage, according to Ryan's roadmap. This is the video I found to check the first statement. The purchases of our of tires, of automobiles, of air filters, of, of all sorts of products. Consumer markets tend to work very well, keep the costs down and the quality up. So how would I do that in healthcare? Well, right now, most people get their insurance through their employer. And the reason they do that is because their employer gets a tax deduction when they buy insurance for you. But if you're a very small business person, let's say a one-person business, you don't get a tax deduction for buying insurance. And if you're an individual that's not employed, you don't get a tax deduction for not for buying your own insurance. What I would do is level the playing field and say individuals can buy insurance on the same tax advantage basis that businesses can buy insurance. So as you can see, Romney did actually say what the Chicago Tribune said he did. This is the article I found to check the second statement. This is the actual interview that Fortune magazine had with Romney. It's called Mitt Romney, Rich Taxpayers Will Pay Their Share. And so I just went through and read it, and I went to the section about tax loopholes and found this sentence. I've noted before my commitment to preserve tax preferences for middle-income taxpayers such as home ownership, charitable giving, and health care. So again, Romney did say what the Chicago Tribune said he did. So this is the homepage for Paul Ryan's uh, Roadmap for America's Future, and I use this to fact check the third statement. So this is the homepage, and I went down to issues to where it says healthcare, and came up to this page, and on the first bullet point it says, it provides a refundable tax credit, $2,300 for individuals and $5,700 for families to purchase coverage in any state and keep it with them if they move or change jobs. So the Chicago Tribune was again accurate on what they said about Ryan. After I read the third statement and checked to make sure that the Chicago Tribune was accurate in what they were saying, I went to factcheck.org to see if what Ryan was claiming about his plan was actually true, that uh, people would be able to buy their own health care. And I came across this site, and in the middle of the page it says, in, in mid-sentence, and future Medicare beneficiaries would be given a voucher to purchase their health insurance in lieu of the current fee-for-service program. So what Ryan is saying is true, is that under his plan, people would be able to, would have a tax credit to buy their own health insurance.